Hey everyone, it's TJ with Avidyne. In the following brief video, we're going to be discussing the IFD interface with the GTX 345. As always, everything in the following video is for reference use only. For FA approved data, please refer to the IFD installation manual. Make sure you're looking at the latest rev. So before we jump into the interface, um, I want to discuss a little bit about RS-232 versus RS-422 um, because there are some, some differences between the two, but there are also some similarities. So looking at RS-232 logic, the way that it works is a positive 5 volts DC is considered a logic low, and a negative 5 volts DC is considered a logic high. That transition voltage isn't truly 0 volts DC, though. It's usually about a volt and a half meaning anything lower than a volt and a half is viewed as a logic high in RS-232 world. For RS-422, it utilizes two wires, a positive and a negative. So the positive wire logic is positive 5 volts DC gives you a logic high, 0 volts DC gives you a logic low. The negative line, however, that logic is reversed. So a positive 5 volts DC gives you a logic low, just like RS-232, and 0 volts DC gives you a logic high, also just like RS-232. Although it doesn't go you know, completely to negative 5 volts DC, like I mentioned, RS-232 world, that transition happens at around a volt and a half. So anything below a volt and a half is going to be viewed as a logic high. So you can actually use an RS-422 transmit negative line to communicate directly with an RS-232 receive input because the logic is basically the same. The difference is uh, 0 volts versus a negative 5 volts, but they're both going to be construed as less than 1.5 volts positive. Okay. Um, big thing to keep in mind here, if we're going to do this, it also means that the shielding for these wires is very important because a volt and a half is all you need for electrical noise uh, that can cause problems here. So uh, keep that in mind as we press on to the actual GTX 345 interface. The IFD is going to utilize that RS-422 output from the GTX 345. That connection is going to be used for capstone weather or capstone high-speed weather only. Now, if you notice, here's the piece you got to pay attention to. If we're going to use that RS-422 output, we're going to use the negative line. Okay? And we're going to feed that into an RS-232 input on the IFD side of things. So on the GTX 345, we're going to set up that RS-422 output uh, to either provide MX format 1, which is going to be a straight capstone weather at 38400 baud rate, or we're going to use optimized legacy ADSB for capstone high speed weather at a 115200 baud rate. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you pick, but make sure that we've got it set accordingly on both ends. So uh, just to reiterate, if we're going to do MX format 1, out of the GTX 345, we're going to set the IFD for straight capstone weather. If we're going to use optimized legacy ADSB out of the GTX 345, we're going to set the IFD side for capstone high speed weather. And then we've got an AirRank 429 out of the GTX 345 coming back into the IFD. And this is going to be where the traffic comes across. So on the IFD side, we're going to set that guy up for GDL88 traffic on that Airing 429 input. Traffic is going to display on the IFD in a, a legacy TAS symbology format. Okay. And then we've got our uh, GPS RS-232 output from the IFD. This is giving us qualified ADSB position source to the GTX 345 for ADSB out. Um, and that's going to be at ADSB plus G 
setting on the IFD side uh, for a 9600 baud rate, or we can do ADSB plus G2 at a 38400 baud rate. Um, either one is acceptable. Just make sure again that it's set the same on both ends. Um, and GPS integrity on the GTX345 side should be set for 1E7. And that's pretty much it for this interface. As always, if you guys have any questions, uh, comments, or concerns, uh, shoot those over to tech support at avidine.com. We'll be sure to get you an answer as quick as we can. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.